Good morning, guys. Today we're going to continue on with uh, chapter 12. And today we are on chapter 12, section 3, titled The Transportation Revolution. I have three objectives for you today. Number one, be able to define transportation revolution. Number two, identify Robert Fulton. And number three, describe the new forms of transportation and their effects on life in America. Okay, first of all, uh, just let's define the transportation revolution. What are we talking about today? Uh, the transportation revolution was the period of time where there was a rapid growth in the speed and convenience of travel because of both the steamboat and the train. As a result of the transportation revolution, we're going to have a rapid expansion of business because shipping costs are going to go down and uh, times are going to go down and goods, people, and information could travel very rapidly. How did this get started? Well, first of all, it started in 1803 uh, in France when Robert Fulton tested his first steamboat design. In 1807, he brought his design to the United States with his steamboat, the Claremont, and traveled upstream the, on the Hudson River. Got an image of it right there. When I say upstream, he was going against the current. And his steamboat, using the power of steam, using wood as a fuel, he was able to travel against the current of the river. And really, this had never been done before. Uh, first boat did not use oars or manpower or the wind to travel. Uh, his proof that a boat could use a steam engine and travel quicker and more efficiently uh, meant that goods and people could now move quickly and cheaper than ever before with a caveat here, they had to be next to a water source. So you either had rivers, or if you remember back to what we've talked about previously, canals being dug uh, to connect basically the Great Lakes and all of America, if you're somewhat near uh, a river, to the Atlantic Ocean. So these steamboats can travel on canals, rivers, or lakes, and quickly and efficiently uh, get items or people where they need to get to. The steam engine was going to do marvels for the for uh, the steamboat, but really it's the railroad where it's going to take off in America like nowhere else. The first steam-powered train was invented in Britain, but it wasn't really until 18, the 1830s in the United States that railroad travel uh, started to kick off. And it all started with a little gimmick in 1830. A man named Peter Cooper had invented a uh, steam-powered train which you can see they're very simple steam powered train and he in front of friends family the press people uh, around the area was going to race a, a racehorse to see if his uh, train could travel faster than a horse because horse was the most reliable fastest form of travel back then so right away out of the gates as you can imagine if you've ever seen a modern day train take off before the horse got off to a, a, a uh, Quite a bit of a leap. But over time, the steam engine built up uh, built up a little bit of a, a go and was beating the horse until the engine broke down and the horse won in the end. Even though Cooper was defeated and his train, which he nicknamed Tom Thumb, was defeated by the horse, this proved to people the concept that a steam-powered train could be a reliable and a very fast form of travel. Within 10 years, uh, over 2,800 miles of train track had been laid in the United States. That was more than all of Europe combined, all the European countries combined uh, at that time. Just 20 years later, over 30,000 miles of track had been laid. The increase in trains and steamboats using steam power increased the need for wood and then a new fuel source which was uh, discovered in coal. Coal uh, for about half the weight of wood could produce twice the amount of energy. So a pound of coal produced four times the amount of uh, energy as a pound of wood. One pound of coal equaled four pounds of uh, 
of wood. So the coal mining industry uh, took off in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Illinois. I got some images of what that really coal mining would have looked like. It was not a glamorous job, hard work, but demand for coal greatly increased. And with trains needing coal, they also needed railroad tracks. And railroad tracks could not necessarily use iron because iron was not a great metal uh, because of rust and because expansion, contraction, and how rigid it was, you needed a little bit more uh, soft metal, which was still stronger, but still able to mold a little bit uh, more and less rigid than iron. To make steel, you take iron and you, and you heat it. Well, we need coal to get the temperatures uh, needed to, uh, to heat iron. So it was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy that the coal mining industry was going to take off because of first the need for the steam engine, but then also for the need for railroad tracks. The effects of the railroad. The logging industry greatly expanded in the United States. They need to cut down trees for tracks and for fuel. This increased the need also for uh, iron mining and for coal mining to build the tracks and the locomotives. Farming increased as it became easier to get people to and from the mid, uh, Midwestern part of the United States and get crops to market, not just with the train but also with the steamboat but also the negative effects of that, of deforestation. Cities uh, that were not, were not along the coastline became very large as transportation hubs, both for canals and, uh, and for railroads. Chicago being a prime example. Chicago is going to become a major city because it's going to become a transportation hub for several different railroads. Okay, guys, the notes for today, very short, but I want to show you something uh, on the Internet as well. And this is a map of uh, how long it took people to travel to different parts of the United States from New York City in different years. You're going to see how long it took people before the railroad and then after the railroad gets going. All right, so this is from a website uh, we, we're going to use in class. If you look at map A right here, I'm going to zoom in on it. This is in 1800. Each one of these lines uh, at first here equals a day, and then out here these bigger lines that are thicker equals one week. So if you're in New York City, right here, to get to Washington, D.C., which is right here, that is a four-day travel uh, using the technology of 1800. Those places are really close to each other, but uh, New York City and Washington, D.C., the two most important cities in America at the time, it took four days to get uh, get there over land because uh, horse-drawn carriage was the uh, only way to go. The railroad first brought to uh, America in 1830. Very simple forms of the railroad, okay? But then you could get to New York, to Washington, D.C. in just under two days. This is because there was not that much uh, train track, uh, railroad track yet laid. But you can see these lines right here. This is where it was in 1800. This is where it is in 1830. It took you a week to get down to parts of North Carolina or to the western part of Virginia in 1800. And now in a week using the very beginnings of the railroad, because there's only a little bit of railroad right through here is about the only way we have railroad, only places we have railroad. In a week now, I can get all the way down to Georgia or Florida and all the way out to Indiana. Okay, by 1857, right before the Civil War, we'll look at other maps later about how much railroad track was, was laid. You could pretty much get anywhere from New York City in New England all the way to Ohio and down to the very border of uh, Virginia, North Carolina in one day now with railroads. A week, this is this big bold line right here. You can get all the way to Minnesota, all the way to Nebraska. Nebraska is not a state yet, uh, but you could get all the way um, to Lexington, Nebraska in a week. Where it used to take you a week just to get down to Virginia, now you can get all the way to uh, Nebraska in, in that time. And then uh, a few years later, once we... Uh, have completed all the railroads in the United States. You can get pretty much anywhere in the United States uh, within three days because of the railroad. Okay, so both the steam uh, powered boat and the railroad become gigantic changes in life in America. 
people, goods, products are able to move very quickly, very efficiently, uh, like nowhere, like uh, at no other time in our history. Okay, guys, that's it for the notes today. Have a great rest of your day.